это. Окей, okay, very scheduling technique. Um, planning and scheduling. The word planning and scheduling. The word planning and scheduling is always being used together, but they are not the same. Planning and scheduling. They are all related to uh, what we call time management. But time management is uh, quite abstract. Okay, how are we going to manage time? Is an abstract terminology. So inside time management, uh, there are subsequently three things. One is planning. Second is scheduling. Third is what we call tracking. For tracking and then controlling. So tracking and controlling, again, uh, the two terminology, but they always come together. So planning is a big thing, is the overall concept thinking process. What about scheduling? Scheduling, uh, remember the 5W plus 1H. All the W, who, what, where, which, except when. When is basically things related to scheduling. So scheduling is when. When, when is that? Uh, work is going to be done when you attach the timing timing meaning to say the the start of the activity and the end of activity so this is what we call when so that is what scheduling is all about but the other thing what to do who you uh, where which how that is what we call planning planning is the thinking process but uh, thing will not be happening yet when the time does not come, okay? When the time come, and then only element of scheduling is there. Okay, very scheduling technique. The importance of uh, construction project scheduling to, especially to, uh, to certain parties, uh, especially client, contractor, etc. in general, basically to give confidence to the client. Remember, during, uh, tendering client will ask contractor who are in, who basically interested to submit their tender one of the important thing to be submitted is basically work program work program or simply known as uh, scheduling okay scheduling of uh, all the works to be put in just one piece of paper okay that scheduling should be uh, comprehensive, inclusive of everything, should be realistic. And you know what? It is like, uh, like what you are doing uh, poster in your IDP project. Why basically you need to do poster? Okay, when you put poster on certain uh, subject, the people who look at the poster will basically understand, have some kind of understanding what exactly that you want to do. So in terms of poster, some student can come up with an uh, excellent poster. Maybe the other student can come up with just simply good poster or average or even poor one. Why? Because they are missing something. Ah, similarly, work program is the reflection of the contractor's thinking. So you put your thinking into uh, that piece of paper uh, experienced client just simply by looking at the uh, work program then they can understand they can have some kind of uh, some kind of perception to what extent this contractor know uh, know the works so from that point of view the contractor get some kind of scoring already you see that would be number one to eliminate uncertainties for sure all scheduling is the thinking ahead of time in order to reduce the potential problem to improve efficiency in terms of resources okay in resources and cost control later on in the second half of the semester we will go into resource management then you will see uh, why scheduling basically is very important because once you attach resources in terms of man material 
money and then uh, uh, machine then only you will know okay then only you will know it will have something to do with what we call uh, cost and then profit a creative uh, scheduler or planner can uh, come out or squeeze everything uh, in the uh, uh, for the period of uh, contract required by the client but maybe at uh, the lowest possible cost uh, that is the best planning uh, anybody can get okay but maybe for some people they can manage to squeeze everything within the contract period but then maybe they will execute the work at a higher cost because creativity is the one that determine how much basically you can under, uh, do the work within a uh, specified contract period but then at least cost that is the most important so better understand project objective and basis for monitoring and controlling. You see, there are three things that I mentioned before. Planning, scheduling, tracking, and controlling. Tracking basically means monitoring. We cannot do monitoring and controlling without uh, scheduling. Without scheduling, meaning to say, once you do not draw your bar chart, as simple as bar chart, Later on, we will learn about bar chart, etc. Then basically, there is no way that you can uh, plot what we call S curve. In the construction industry, all around the world, people measure the progress of the work according to what we call S curve. If you have been doing your LI at a construction site, you must know this S curve already by, by now. It is industry standard, but the issue is that how do people plot the S curve based on what? Uh, that is the issue by right during your practical training, you should have uh, asked uh, the people at the construction site how basically uh, they plot the S curve. That's how you learn things from uh, the real uh, workplace. Okay, for contractors. Again, a basis to estimate resources. Okay, based on uh, how much of the work that need to be completed or activities, then basically you will know the quantity of the work and then uh, how many resources that you want to use and then how much money that you need to spend to execute certain works. Okay, so that's why it is a basis. Otherwise, Without planning, then basically you cannot quantify how many manpower you need, how much uh, money you need to spend, how many machinery, when basically machinery need to be uh, to be called in. Okay, you do not want to bring machinery too early, too late, uh, or only a few, whereas you need a lot more and etc. So that is basically something to do with planning basis for monitoring okay for sure contractor is the one that prepare the uh, s curve then uh, they will submit to the client client basically uh, will approve the similar s curve so that everybody will read the same uh, the same uh, what we call kpi and you know what why it is so important because the contract can be terminated once the contractor basically uh, uh, running late by maybe 20% uh, or even maybe 30% according to a contractual document, we need to check those things. Okay, so that's why it is important to set some kind of uh, standard so that the client and contractor will have the same uh, measurement, evidence, support, and request of EOT. Okay, let's say you are running late. You are running late and then you want to request extension of time, EOT, okay, extra time. Do you think the client will just simply uh, give whatever thing that you ask? No, no, it is not as simple as that. The client will evaluate uh, 
where basically the delay happened and what could be the causes of delay. And the client will only entertain when the causes of delay uh, caused by the client or the client representative. If the delay is being caused by the contractor themselves, then there is no way that the contractor is going to get the extension of time. And then claim. Our industry, construction industry is based on uh, the payment is basically based on the work that you perform. You need to perform the work first and then you submit claim. Then the client will evaluate the claim and then only they will pay based on what they thought that it is uh, the claim is basically accurate. Okay, and often time, sometime contractor give all the evidence based on claim, uh, claim on uh, certain quantities, but the client basically pay differently, pay basically less, because every everybody try to avoid to 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 uh, what we call uh, uh, everybody is having a problem with money, even the client. So the client also trying to avoid to to uh, get the money out from the account eh, because they have they have so many things to pay. So they try to pay as less as possible. But if the contractor have sufficient claim, then basically the client also cannot cannot do anything. So that's why the evidence must be there. Okay, the client basically uh, will monitor the the progress of the contractor, and that's how. They will pay according to what they, they uh, things being measured. So again, whatever uh, indicator uh, based on planning scheduling would be helpful. It is not the only one. Uh, planning scheduling is uh, only part of the indicator. There are so many other things. Okay, so when those things being add up, then it form a basis uh, for the client to basically. Uh, either to entertain a contractor's claim or to cut contractor's claim and whatnot. Okay, but they must be based on something. Okay, otherwise it is very difficult. Important aspect that need to be to be scheduled is what activity start and then finish. Example, let's take a look at bar chart. Simple bar chart. This is what you're going to start. Okay, and then this is the finish. Let's say this is 10 days. So it will start on the first day and then finish on the, uh, uh, at the end of 10 days. So starting and ending. That's what we call scheduling. Distribution of project costs. Okay, this activity uh, basically running for 10 days. And how much does it cost? Is it 10,000? Is it 11,000? And how do we calculate the cost? Well, Again, it is based on your estimate, taking off, man, machine, material, and then profit. That basically contribute to the, uh, the cost of certain uh, work to be allocated. Allocation of re uh, resources. Okay, in 10 days, let's say uh, this activity is basically site clearing. The name of activity is site clearing. Site clearing normally use what? Uh, site clearing, we do not use many people anyway. We use a bulldozer and maybe one helper or two helper, whatever. Uh, so very minimum people, but uh, more on the equipment or machine. If you bring in one machine, uh, maybe it will take 10 days. If you bring uh, two machine, maybe you can cut down on a number of uh, duration. So it depends. Resources, again, you must determine. And out of that uh, resources, then you will, uh, you will reflect the cost. You can bring um, bigger capacity bulldozer, but bear in mind that the bigger the machine, the, the higher the renting rate, or the cost that is what normally 
association of the machinery based on the output capacity. Two phases of project schedule, master plan. And then uh, second one is detailed work schedule. Fortunately, if we use software nowadays, we can integrate both master plan and work schedule in one work program because it is just a matter of whether you want to see the detail or not, you just simply uh, click uh, close or hide certain uh, button so that the detail will not be uh, shown. Because sometimes when you want to print out to give to certain people, especially the boss, the boss do not want to look at the detail and the boss also not interested in the detailing. Boss also want to know when basically this, uh, this building is going to be completed. That is the, the thing that boss interested. So that's what we call master plan. Let's say master plan, example. Uh, in your IDP project, you already plan the piece of uh, uh, that plot of land will be developed uh, the, and the development will consist of what? The road, the drainage, the housing, maybe, uh, uh, maybe, maybe have some school, malls, uh, community building, or it could be apartment, or it could be a, a shop lot, etc etc depending on your planning and the master plan is basically will reflect uh, you you put all the development uh, the, the building that you want to basically uh, construct later on okay let's say uh, apartment so apartment okay apartment and then you draw one big uh, what we call bar chart. This is for apartment. Then school. Maybe like this. Then shop lot. Shop lot. Maybe like this. This is what we, what we call master plan. So everything inside your IDP project or all the building, everything including road, you just reflect one big uh, bar chart. But Inside the apartment, if you want to construct apartment, there are so many things that you need to do. You need to do excavation, you need to do sub structure, superstructure, roof, etc. etc. And that one is the one that we call detail work schedule. You see? So that is the different the difference between master plan and then detail work. Okay. Detail work consists of the detailing the breaking apart of all the big big things that you want to uh, to construct uh, in order to complete the whole apartment and whatnot okay so detailed work program prepared by, by contractor before work start must get approval from the client ah, during tender contractor normally prepare a work program for the tendering purposes and contractor never know whether they could win or not. Okay, let's say at the end of the day, the winner has been uh, uh, has been declared and the contractor C is the winner. And then contractor C will, uh, during, during a few weeks before the start of the actual uh, construction work, he need to basically submit one of the, the first thing is basically detailed work schedule. Uh, this detailed work schedule is the real thing. It's real thing. Why client want this thing? Because client want to uh, monitor you. Okay, monitor to what extent. It is a detailed work, work schedule. This submission is like um, what we call your promise. Okay, your promise. You promise the client that you will do this and that and that and that this is your planning okay now uh, based on your promise the client agree okay it sounds reasonable uh, that could be the basis to monitor your work because you know what in a contract it spell out one of the uh, uh, the reason why contract can be terminated 
contracted contract can be terminated or kicked out of the project is based on poor performance. Poor performance or progress. You see, let's say contractor promised that uh, in the three months, they are going to achieve 10% of the progress. In the next uh, three months again, another 10%. But in reality, uh, that thing could not be achieved. When that thing could not be achieved, meaning to say projection-wise, contractor will require extra time. And that is the one that a client do not like. Okay? Client always like when you completed the project in accordance with the contract period. Include all the detailed work required for the project. Okay? Normally consists layers of WBS. WBS. So you need to remember this word because we are going to uh, mention it again and again. Work breakdown structure. Must conform to contract milestone and master plan of the project. For sure, detailed work schedule is basically based on the, the master, plan, master work program. It is just the breakdown. Okay? But as I mentioned nowadays, uh, computer software can do both. So both master work program and detail work program is, is inside uh, inside that work program. Okay, it is like two in one. Unlike the previous uh, the old days of doing things where software might not be around, people basically use the AutoCAD, you know, the drawing software, the Excel in order to draw the bar chart. So it could be very uh, tedious in order to come up with the detailing. So that's why they do have separate uh, work program for master work program and then detail work program. Okay, method of developing work uh, project schedule using computer or manual scheduling. Okay, in our class, we are going to learn manual scheduling first. Only then, I will show you a little bit on uh, computer, Microsoft project, but because of this online, we, not, we might not be as efficient as uh, the normal class. Normally in normal class, I will bring the student to the computer lab and everybody will have a hands-on on uh, how to use the Microsoft project. So, but now it is online might not be efficient, but we just, uh, demonstrate those things. Okay, actually, talking about scheduling software, there are a lot of scheduling software around. If you Google, you can find many, 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 many scheduling software. This is just to name a few. Okay, remember these two software, which is uh, the one that uh, may be popular in Malaysia. But if you Google top 10 software, scheduling software in uh, now, maybe now think this, this uh, diagram basically has changed a little bit. I just Googled last week or so. So they changed. Why? The top scheduling software not even being used in Malaysia. It was being developed mostly in US. And in US, you, you have to remember U.S. do have around 320 million uh, population. It is 10 times bigger than Malaysia. Okay, We only have 332 million. U.S. 320 or 30 million. Just imagine. If they develop any software, and even they use in U.S. alone, uh, that software is, is sufficient to, to break even in terms of the cost. Okay. And most of the software being developed in US and it is it basically fit into their work system. So that's why for them it is easier to use all this software because everything basically fit into the system, the way they pay the they pay the salary, everything. But then when it comes to our country, we found it very difficult because some of the things when we input the uh, values, it might not be uh, in accordance with what we practice. So at the end of the day, people just abandon using software 
and then go back using a simple thing like Excel, whatever. Okay. Yeah, that is the constraint that we have. Okay. And then uh, before we take a break, okay, just uh, I want to stop at this one. Okay. When we want to use software, scheduling software, you must remember one thing. Who is going to use or read the file that you are going to send? That is the most important thing because otherwise, uh, otherwise when you send people e email about the latest update on uh, your project, then people simply cannot open. You cannot send them PDF file because there are so many things that inside the Microsoft project, you need to click view here, view there in order to see what's going on because Microsoft project uh, do have what we call default views. They do not show all because otherwise you, you cannot fit into the screen. Okay. So you must remember who is going to read. So it is not like design software. When you did your practical uh, training at the consultant office, normally consultant office will use different software. Sometimes they don't even have software. They just simply develop an Excel. As long as it can calculate, then that's, that's okay. Whereas a big, big um, consultant could have a more uh, comprehensive or up-to-date software. They even use BIM or whatever. Okay, the issue is that when you design things, especially consultant, who is going to read your design? Perhaps the interested party could be client. Even client also sometimes they request the design uh, the design calculation, but they, they then said don't even know how to check. Okay. And then uh, who else interested in the design? Contractor don't have to know your design. The local authority don't have to know the design. The subcontractor, the supplier don't. But when you, when we are, we, uh, with regard to scheduling, you must remember who is going to uh, read yours contractor for sure you are the one that do the scheduling your subcon your supplier need to know when to come in for sure your client and then consultant then if you have pmc project management consultant you see there are various party uh, who basically interested to know your work program or your schedule, updated schedule every now and then. So that's why you, you must make sure you use the software that people, uh, popular software that everybody can have access to. So by saying that, we have no choice in Malaysia. We have no choice. We must basically use popular software such as Microsoft Project or Primavera. And what are the differences between these two software? Microsoft Project, who basically uh, use my Primavera was invented long, long, long time, even before the invention of uh, Windows. Before the existence of Microsoft Windows, I already learned Primavera during my study way back in university. Even without the window, window is no window yet. At that time, only Apple developed basically Windows, Windows operating system for Apple computer. But then it was being copied by uh, Microsoft. But then later on, Microsoft was uh, much more popular than the Apple anyway. So Primavera, Primavera was uh, even invented long time ago. Then only after uh, Microsoft invented Windows, uh, even at initial stage, Microsoft Project was not part of the office. Okay, they invented the office uh, Microsoft Word, Excel, and then PowerPoint. Then only later on, maybe I think the first Microsoft Project is year two thousand, I guess, was being released. In to some extent, uh, I would say Microsoft Project do copy. Uh, from Primavera in terms of the layout, concept, etc., etc. 
but it's not going to be comparable because just imagine Microsoft project, the original software could uh, cost you around the standard version could cost you around uh, 2,500, whereas the professional version could cost you around 5,000. And imagine Primavera could cost you around 25,000 for one software. Just imagine the original version, but you can get the uh, so-called uh, uh, version that can be run, uh, get from uh, Shopee, uh now now it is 11 11 sale you go to the shopee and then type in microsoft project 2019 you can basically get that thing in order for you to uh, for for the purpose of learning because uh, later on you might need that software in order to do some uh, work that need to be submitted so my advice uh, basically you can get that okay from uh, those places okay so primavera was invented for the purpose of a complex project such as oil and gas industry and construction whereas microsoft project is meant for multi uh, multi-discipline so many many more field or industry can use uh, Microsoft project. It is not limited to construction. So, so that's why this software is not meant for construction industry. Anybody can use. You can even use that thing uh, to schedule your daily work, your office work, whatever. Okay. And by looking at the uh, the differences in terms of uh, cost of this software, so you already noticed that. Microsoft uh, Primavera must have a lot of features. That's why it is more expensive. Okay, whereas Microsoft Project uh, do have limited uh, features, but I would say uh, it is sufficient enough to be used. Actually, once you know how to use Microsoft Project, then basically you will understand it. Capability is is uh, is more than sufficient. You don't need to to have Primavera, okay? Primavera, Primavera. If your project requires Primavera, then then you go and learn about Primavera, okay? But both of these, uh, the owner, Primavera now is owned by Oracle, okay? Oracle is a big uh, software company, and that guy is also number five or six billionaire in the world whereas microsoft project owned by bill gates may you know, usually microsoft bill gates is number one or now maybe number two or number three okay in the top uh, 10 list of uh, billionaire all right so we uh, okay all right so the last slide before we go for break benefit of using computer generated schedule okay the issue is that in our class, we are going to learn about manual calculation. Why you need to do manual to learn about manual calculation so that you will understand the basis. If you use computer without knowing the basis, you can input anything. When you input anything, the output will be generated also, but then the output could be wrong. Then there is there is no way that you can detect because you also do not know the fundamental of how those things. Uh, are being generated okay just imagine in our manual calculation normally in our exam or whatever we give we simply give you around maybe 20 uh, activities just 20 activities even that 20 activities you need to spend around maybe half an hour or 40 minutes in order to solve problem related to that network diagram just imagine if your activities uh, if your activities or tasks consist of thousand and thousand just imagine what would uh, what would happen to the, uh, the 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 amount of time that you need to spend just imagine you need to spend a lot of time eh, looking at those things and recreating redraw etc but now with the help of the computers things can get done easily 
that is the advantages of uh, using computer uh, scheduling okay with that we uh, shall take a break okay so we shall continue with the rest of the slide project scheduling technique okay there are many scheduling technique around except that we choose uh, a few uh, for our class okay the rest you can basically uh, google or look at it youtube there are people basically tell about uh, scheduling technique okay the one that we or you should basically well versed at the end of the class for instance understand how to draw the gun chart sorry understand how to draw the gun chart and then uh, this two is basically related and then what could be the network diagram okay arrow diagram aon precedent diagram and then put and line of balance but in our class our focus could be uh, the bar chart aoa diagram and this diagram okay so this is the one that you should well verse because it will appear again and again in your uh, assignment or even test or even exam okay this is this is example of bar chart or gun chart the proper name actually is gun chart is taking after henry gun he is the one that invented the uh, gun chart but sometimes people say bar chart why simply because we draw bar okay horizontal bar the bar could be vertical that is the one that we use to reflect the quantity or whatever thing that we normally put in excel but when we draw something in horizontal bar and then there is a timing this is what we call time scale time scale this is what we call bar chart so bar chart is very simple list of activities so this is the name of activities and then you draw bar the left side of the bar indicates start and then the right side of the bar the end of the activities or we call it finish the start and finish of the activity reflect the length of the bar so that is the basis of bar chart or gun chart okay this is uh, it is not a typical this is what we call tracking gun uh, the proper word is basically tracking gun that we can uh, generate from microsoft project later on you notice there are two bar okay there are two bar this one and this one the black one is basically reflect the baseline or the plan whereas the uh, the blue bar reflect the actual plan versus actual so this is a tracking gun uh, tracking gun chart Okay, tracking gun chart. There are two bar for each activities. Gun chart or bar chart using time scale. Okay, time scale you can just simply draw in terms of what? As low as uh, in terms of minutes, hours, days, week, month, year, or whatever. That's what we call time scale easily understood can accommodate what is this this is the wrong spelling can accommodate numerous uh, information in one chart easily developed and useful for general work schedule or even i would say detailed work schedule nowadays if we are using microsoft project or primavera both bar chart and uh, pdm diagram uh, is being shown automatically is there okay so that that is good about uh, current software because uh, both bar chart and then uh, the network diagram are being shown except that you need to click uh, views otherwise it won't appear because it is being hide somewhere okay limitation of gun chart i will not 
uh, say uh, if you are using Excel on whatnot, then for sure do not show logical relationship. Only so suitable for small project. Well, this is not uh, relevant anymore because nowadays software can be used for anything, even a small, big, medium sized project. Okay. Uh, for master plan or even for detail, we can use both. Okay, network diagram. Two common system in network diagram, better known as AOA diagram. Why? A stand activity on arrow. So you see AOA or simply known as arrow diagram or AD. In certain book, they will call AD, arrow diagram. And then AON, activity on node. And subsequently, uh, better known as pre uh, precedent diagram method or PDM. PDM. So this one is basically the origin AON. Then subsequently, uh, it evolved uh, evolve into PDM diagram. Okay, we will look into this thing in our next slide. So at the end of the day, you must be able to construct this diagram either using uh, this method or this method. Basic features of network diagram, we should have arrow, nodes, logical relationship, path, and then critical path. What are these things? Okay, example, AOA diagram. AOA diagram, in order to construct, you start with what? One nodes, this is what we call node, the circle, then arrow, then close by another nodes. Then perhaps this is another activity. You can name the activity by A or B. You can put the duration down here, duration. And then this node number one, this node number two, this is node number three. So similarly here, you start with one node and then arrow. This is what we call tail. Tail is the start of an activity. Arrowhead indicate the end or the finish of activity. So this is what we call arrow. Indicate activity. Let's say activity is piling. The name of the activity is on the arrow. The name of the activity. This could be stump. See? After piling finish, then stump will start. Then it will go on how many days? Let's say three days, whereas piling could go for 10 days. And then it will finish. So this is how we draw AOA diagram. Start with one node, close with another node, then followed by subsequent activity, and then close by another node. So in this situation, we do have two activities. Piling and stump. So this is AOA diagram graphic, how it looks like. Then AON. AON is different way of drawing uh, the network diagram or graphic, I would say graphic. So the whole uh, here, the whole so-called activity piling here, as the name imply, A O N activity is being put on the node. So the box here, instead of circle, people originally it was circle. Circle is considered as nodes. But then, in order not to confuse with A O N diagram, the nodes that uh, circle has been changed into square box. So this is also node. And then, how about activity? Activity is being put in the nodes such as piling. How many days of piling? 10 days. And then how about this arrow? This arrow do not indicate activity. It just indicate relationship. What is the relationship between piling and stump? Like say three days. So the left side of the box indicates start. The right side of the box indicate finish. Because the whole thing here, this indicate as one activity. 
you notice that it is similar to this one. And this thing here indicate one activity which is similar to this activity sum. And the arrow is only to connect those uh, activity together as in the case of what type of relationship for that connect uh, each uh, activity. The type of relationship is based on this thing. Finish, remember? It's finish and this is start. So we call this relationship as finish to start relationship. And as in the case of AOA diagram, you notice there is finish to start here. So the relationship for uh, this diagram is also finished to start. See, everything is the same except the way the graphic is being shown. And uh, you remember the bar chart was being developed way back in 19, uh, 1910, much earlier. And then the late 1950s, AOA diagram was being developed. Then only in the late of, uh, no, no, in the early of 1960s, AON was being developed. It was being developed by a different person. That's why uh, people develop something uh, uh, for the for the uh, the object the objective is basically to make people understand how to read uh, certain things okay and then they they will improve again and again okay all right so those are the basic differences between AOA and then AON diagram so when we talk about network network meaning to say interrelated um, diagram. So even this one, you notice, I just want to uh, show the differences between AOA diagram. This is what we call AOA diagram. The activity is on the arrow. This is the arrow. The activity is being written on the arrow. Okay. And now the activity is inside the notes. That's why we call it AOA diagram. Uh, sorry. This is AON diagram. AON diagram. You see? Inside the notes. Uh, but we have not uh, going uh, into the detail yet. Okay, later on, you will see the, the whole network diagram. Okay. This uh, three pages, or three or how many? Or four pages four pages of uh, information that I share with you consists of three things. First is basically the bar chart, you see? Then AOA diagram, AOA diagram. This is what we call PDM diagram. We have not learned PDM diagram yet, okay? But uh, some of the basic diagram can be mentioned as AON diagram. Okay, example. Example, the simple one. We go uh, something like this. Okay, let's take a look at simple example. Bar chart. How to draw bar chart? You see, this is the time scale. Time scale, the axis. Uh, the axis here is basically the scale, the timing. A. You draw a bar, and the length of the bar normally reflect the, 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 the length of the time or duration that you want. Normally, when you draw, you put a scale, or if uh, not necessarily, you put a scale. Uh, if you can just simply put the, the length of the duration uh, at the bar, that will be sufficient enough. People will understand. Okay, what happens is that after A completed and then we B will start. So how to draw that thing as AOA diagram? So AOA diagram, we start with one note, then arrow, arrowhead. So this is A, then close with one note, and then follow, continue with another arrow, uh, B activity, and then close. So you see, this thing, and this thing are the same, except the way we draw based on the, the uh, what we call the guideline, how to draw bar chart, 
how to draw AOA diagram and number number three okay this one this one there are three I would say three column here bar chart activity on arrow and precedent diagram or AON diagram the simple one we call it AON diagram but the complicated one we call it PDM diagram okay so for activity AON diagram activity is being drawn inside a box this can be considered as one activity when this activity completed then immediately B will be uh, will be done okay will be conducted or will be constructed whereas the arrow is just simply to show the relationship you see there are ways to reflect uh, activities in terms of the graphic but you will get the same answer anyway let's say activities a basically run for five days activity b run for four days you see from the calculation first day and then fifth day and then at the end of the fifth day or the following days because we only use the working days we do not include non-working days five plus four equivalent to nine you see we completed the project in nine days and how to calculate here zero plus five equal to five plus uh, five plus four equal to nine you see same and this one we start with zero this is five zero plus five equal to five five transfer here five five plus four equal to nine you see every every uh, method basically should uh, give the same answer except the graphic wise all right so you the first thing that you need to do you go back and then you study this four slide in order to understand how to draw each of the uh, activity based on the information given but the issue is that pdm diagram we have not uh, come across with this uh, deno, deno, denomination yet later on you will learn okay that's why i do not want to go into this thing first but you can just study by yourself okay okay put diagram put diagram program evaluation and review technique remember i told you way back in 1910 uh, people henry gunn developed the gun chart and then uh, nine, late 1950s uh, i couldn't remember the name of the guy that developed this aon like aoa diagram then after that a few years just a few years Pert diagram was being developed. Pert diagram, or better known as Apollo project. Why? Because when US was uh, trying to send people to the moon, that's what we call Apollo project. They were using, they were developing a scheduling software just for the purpose of that thing. And that's how this Pert program come uh, into the existence. So the issue is that what if remember previously in my example here activity a is five days activity b is four days at the end of the day we know that the project is going to be completed in nine days but what if if one activity do have um, what we call variation of activity which can we can say optimistic most likely or pessimistic in, in terms of time example let's say activity a activity a do have uh, the in term of definition eh, optimistic it could take four days or it could take uh, most likely seven days or pessimistic 10 days and then how exactly are you going to calculate uh, that's why I, I mentioned to you this uh, work program was being developed during the uh, the Apollo project because at that time they didn't know exactly how could be the timing so for uh, the project which is uh, have a lot of uh, uncertainties in terms of timing we could use 
this uh, method. So the method utilizes arrow diagram, okay, but the only differences basically they do have three variation of uh, what we call timing. And in order to to calculate the timing, you need to take the average based on this formula. So meaning to say at the end of the day, you are not going to have even numbers. Maybe you will have at the end of the day here, uh, maybe like uh, 25.23 days, you see, because of uh, the calculation, okay? But I would say maybe nowadays, due to the fact that we, a lot of projects that we develop nowadays have some kind of precedent, meaning to say, uh, people have developed the same project before in other part of the world. Let's say in Malaysia, we want to develop high-speed train. Well, maybe it is the first in our country, but it was being developed way back uh, in Japan, in France, in Europe, in, uh, in Germany, and in China, long time before we even know those things. We want to develop what? Uh, tall building. Well, a lot of country has has been developing developing tall country a long time ago, cool, many many years. So you see, a lot of things that we develop in Malaysia uh, can be found uh, uh, everywhere in the world. Everywhere in the world, they have developed. Then only we just uh, basically copy paste uh, the the concept of the project. So uh, Perth might not be uh, chosen because a lot of things uh, is known now. Line of balance, LOB. We call it LOB. Okay, a scheduling technique suitable for repetitive nature of activities uh, uh, project. Meaning to say, repetitive. This uh, concept comes from manufacturing. In manufacturing, basically they are producing the same uh, product again and again. Uh, that's why the process is almost repetitive, repetitive in nature. But in construction, uh, people try to bring whatever people use in the manufacturing industry in order to make uh, it uh, become easier to look at. Uh, because the nature of construction somehow also repetitive in nature. For instance, if we construct, okay, if we construct uh, in our project, we do have piling. You notice that if we construct a housing project uh, or even uh, whatever building, the nature of the piling is also similar, isn't it? The same, except that location might be different. Okay, everything is repeated after itself. If we construct tall building, every floor is the same. Uh, housing project, every house is the same. Uh, uh, railway, all the track is the same. Roadways, drainage, sewerage, the, the process basically repeat itself. So if that is the nature, can we equate in terms of the quantity of the work being done uh, with respect to the timing. Okay, for instance, if we take one activity, just name the activity as piling, for instance, we know that if we spend a uh, certain uh, amount of time, then we are going to complete, let's say one, in terms of quantity, quantity of piling, one piling in maybe in, uh, in one day, for instance time equal to one day. So if we want to complete two piling, then we require two days. So at the end of the day, we are going to have some kind of equation line. This is what we call linear equation. Okay, linear equation. Uh, this is what we call productivity rate uh, of uh, activity. This is for piling. So this is what uh, this line is all about. A line of balance is basically sometimes is being called linear scheduling. Why? Because it equates in terms of the quantity of the work and then the timing 
time of the activity. And similarly, for other activity, let, let's say excavation. And the, the quantity, how much uh, uh, one cubic meter, one cubic meter of work can be completed, can be excavated, uh, maybe in one hour, maybe one cubic meter uh, could be equivalent to one hour, whatever. You see, if, uh, so if we need two cubic meter, then two hours, etc., etc. So this could be another line. So all of the construction activity can be shown in terms of this kind of line. So if, for instance, we uh, have all kind of line for each of the activity, then basically we can plot in our uh, whatever paper in terms of what we call quantity versus timing using what we call line of balance. Okay, some line of balance we sometimes it is just a simple line, just one one line, but sometimes they just put thickness uh, to give some kind of buffer. Buffer meaning to say waiting time between one activity and another activity. That's why you see the thickness. What is the purpose of line of balance? The purpose of line balance is basically for, for easy, uh, easy reading purposes. Because sometimes we, we also want to know how much quantity uh, uh, we are going to be, to be completed in a certain given time that kind of uh, quantity we want to know. So the best way to uh, know the quantity is by uh, drawing this line of balance. And it is not to say, once we have line of balance, then there is no gun chart, no gun chart needed, no uh, PDM diagram needed. No, 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 that is wrong concept. Line, is, line of balance is just a two complement Maybe in the work program, gun chart is there. PDM diagram is also there. And even line of balance is there because it is meant for viewing purposes. Sometimes you can uh, take a look at a certain thing at a faster rate when you view a gun chart, for instance, uh, instead of PDM diagram. PDM diagram is meant for analyzing delays. Then you can see uh, those things very fast. But when you want to analyze delay with respect to gun chart, there is no way because you cannot see the interrelated activities. So now do you understand different uh, scheduling technique, why people invented different scheduling technique? It was meant for different purposes. Okay, it is not to say, uh, for sure there, there are advantages and disadvantages for each of the scheduling technique, but I would say they complement each other so you have the choice to, to view from different angle, okay, from different perspective in, or, in order for, to give information faster to the right uh, person or to the right reader. Okay, so that is basically the uh, introduction in terms of scheduling technique. Okay, let me 